G'day. In today's book, I'm opening up an Asus Vivo book. This particular one has the model number K352Z. And what I want to do is when I open this up, I want to see what A, what can be upgraded regarding hard drive and potentially RAM. So right now the machine is switched off and I should be able to use a T5 or T4 screwdriver to get into this machine. I can already tell one leg is missing, so I'm not sure what's going on there. This was purchased second hand. And I'm using a T4 screwdriver. Have it come loose. It was a bit difficult to get out. I will let you know if any of these screws are of different lengths. I feel like the ones nearest to me at the front here will be. And this did come with a small 256 gigabyte SSD, which I find a little bit too small. Especially when it comes with a pretty good 2.8K, 15.6 inch OLED display. That's so kind of a massive, massive or good picture quality with not much space. This one here is smaller. Smaller here as well. Smaller. One tip I will give you is, is if you are missing screws on the bottom of your laptop, do prioritize the parts nearest to your hinge the most. Yeah, move those screws out of the way. And I'm just going to try and grip and pull. I'll have to start prying to begin with. I'm just going to use a thin metal pry tool just to start it. Should be able to hopefully get it going to begin with. No. Start at the front. There we go. Easy. Plastic bottom. And looking inside here, I can see one battery here, one stick of RAM, NVMe drive, really not much else. Wi Fi card. So let's zoom in and go around it. To begin with, I do want to disconnect the battery as it will be replacing the hard drive. So if I zoom you guys in before we go around. There we go. This latch, the silver bit should be able to go back, like so. Then I should just be able to lift up to install it. Push it down, click it in, slide that metal bit forward, and now we're back in the locked position. So that's very straightforward. We'll disconnect here. Next up, we have the 8 gig of DDR4, 3200 megahertz. These two tabs here push out, lifts up, and pull it back, and we're out. So as I said, DDR, DDR4, 8 gig stick. This also has 4 gig of RAM integrated into the board. So you could change this to a 16 or a 32 gig stick of RAM to get a decent amount of RAM on this particular machine. It's a bit disappointing, it is only a single slot. Dual slot would be much better, as you'd be able to run in dual channel. To put the RAM back in, there is a small notch here, which corresponds to down here. I'm gonna put it in on about a 35, 45 degree angle and pull down and it should click into position. So push it in, so the gold's covered down the bottom here. Gold's exposed, gold's covered, push down. That's it, no further configuration is required. Next up, we have the NVMe SSD. I'm not sure what generation this is. I will look that up in just a moment. Um, being we're 12th gen, I'm gonna assume we're PCI Gen 4. May be wrong with that. There we go. We have a thermal pad along here. Kind of latches over. I'll put the heatsink out of the way. Next up, we have one NVMe drive that I'm just gonna pull up slightly. And similar to the RAM, Gonna walk it back. There we go. There we go. NVMe Gen 4 by 4. So 256 gig NVMe drive. This one I'm gonna clone with just an older NVMe uh, Gen 3 one terabyte drive. But I'd much rather storage capacity over performance on this particular machine. Now I finished cloning onto my one terabyte drive. And luckily for me, NVMe drive to USB 3 Type-C 
and then back to a, US, uh, to a USB enclosed SSD. Works very quickly. So very much rate that. Used a Cronus True Image. Now to install it, similar to the RAM, we have a pin missing or gap in the middle, which corresponds to a gap over here. Similar to the, S, uh, the RAM, probably a bit of less of an angle. We slide it in. It's a bit less of an angle. Slide it in. Drop. That's currently installed. Next up, put the cooler back on. There's two teeth over here. You've got to line them up and then push it down. So line up, line up, push, push, and push. And that is the NVMe drive installed. Now we've got to put the screw in to secure it. Go, that's now secured. Look around the rest of it, if you do well, actually, I didn't say if you damage the charging port, this one charges on Type C with two Type C ports side by side and a bracket, kind of applying pressure. So you will need to do board level repair if there is a dam any damage to your Type C ports. Looking across, we have downward facing speaker, battery as mentioned, another downward facing speaker. And it looks like we have the Wi Fi antennas built down the bottom here, which I don't actually mind that idea where they're actually in the plastic on the bottom rather than in the metal on the screen. And looking around it, screen connector, not sure what this one is here. One thing I do always recommend when you open up a laptop as well is to check the pressure on the hinges. As most of the time, they're a school computer, I will be a bit sloppy. That's good, 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 that's all okay. This here, I'm assuming some spacing, just so the plastic doesn't warp too much. Where I'd say on other models, there may be two fans here. I'm going to assume that with the Intel 12th gen chip here, there's maybe potentially another chip over here, and it would be on the same cooler. It doesn't look like there could almost be room for two fans. But anyway, let's get this now, put the bottom cover back on once more. And make sure before you reassemble your machine, to reconnect the battery. Should click on, metal cover goes over it, locks it into position. There we go. Putting the bottom cover on should be pretty straightforward. Start at the back, push in, click, click, click. Go. Put down here. Now I'm going to use two long screws in the back here. Remember these are T4 screws. Screw trying to escape. There we go. And I'll leave that one smack bang in the center out. I'd much rather all the edges to be taken care of. And proceed to tighten up. So along the front, one, two, three, four, they are the smaller screws. So far, so good. Until I've dropped a screw. I'll look for that in a moment. If not, stick with the same principle. Outer corners need the screws more than flat straights. I'm going to look for that screw, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Found it.